Uh, do you know that, like in most TV series, there are filler episodes that yes. don't have to do with anything? <laughs> if you haven't tuned in yet, this is our filler episode. We're talking about games, but we're really not giving you anything. Welcome to the Board Game Snobs Podcast. Critically harsh reviews with a touch of class. Thank you, Nigel. Welcome back to another episode of Board Game Snobs. I'm Gabby. I'm Jerry. And uh, we're here to talk about board games. Follow us on Tumblr, <laughs> Twitter, the BGG Guild, the Facebook profile thing that I had set up. And um, we have that BG. No, we have board game snobs at gmail.com. Please send us a letter. Let us know that you're listening. This a is getting letter. very lonely. Emails. Nobody listens. Friendly Frankie. Friendly Frankie. And Joe G. We have five whole reviews on iTunes. What? Five reviews. We're on iTunes? We're on iTunes. We're on Google. We're on Stitcher. We're on, I think we're on Stitcher. We're on almost everything. We're everywhere. We're like a virus. <laughs> <laughs> we're like Outbreak with a monkey and Dustin Hoffman. Didn't, um, no. Who was the lady in that? The lady? The woman. Um, I don't think we're supposed to say actress? lady. I saw someone the other day. You saw a person? <laughs> <laughs> Did no. you left the house and saw someone? <laughs> I saw something the other day that says... Uh, it was like BuzzFeed. You're not it says you're not supposed to call women females. Like when you refer to a woman, don't call her female. Call her a woman. Because female just refers to her sex, her gender. Whereas oh. a woman is the person. Hmm. So put that in your memory banks. I just say hey to everybody. Okay. That's how I am. And I feel that people you're know. You're going to get in trouble well, someday. Well, no, no. No, I hey. won't. No, because people know that I am friendly. Friendly Frankie? But I'm not creepy fr- fr- friendly. You can be creepy sometimes. Uh, and people think that this is just a good guy. This is a good guy. <laughs> oh, really? And they say to themselves, well, whatever he just said to me, even though it may have been offensive, uncomfortable or offensive, terrible. he's just a good guy. I feel like he's got a good heart. And he's got a good heart. He didn't mean that. He didn't mean what he said. He didn't mean those terrible, terrible, terrible things, things he said. <laughs> yeah. I have to say that sometimes I've noticed Uh-oh. that I say things that are not uh, friendly. PC? PC. Culture? So I have been toning it down. Trying to. Trying to. To make sure that I talk about and say things that are uh, very, uh, you can't misconstrue them. And I played a game here recently. This is a segue. Oh my god! I thought we were really having a conversation. Called the crypto. Little did I know it was a segue. That's how segways happen. They just creep up on you and what? they pounce. You just minding your own business, oh and then you saw some next thing you know, you've been segway. No. The crypto by Lo Games is it Lo or Yellow? It's yellow, but there's no Y. You're a board game snob. You should know this by now. Why do they call it yellow when it's spelled with an I? Because they're trying to be cool. Just spell it yellow. Uh, uh, yellow's probably been trademarked. By who? The crayon the people? The color. Oh. Sure. Crayons. Oh, I never thought of that. Crayola. You can't just name your company a color yellow. You can't? How many companies? Uh, what company do you know that's named... Red, blue, orange, there's, green. There's a board game called Blue Orange. Blue Orange Games. Yeah. But they put both of those together. Oh, you're right. I want to start a company called Yellow. With a Y? With a Y. And just mess them up. I'm going to make cheap knockoffs of IELO's <laughs> board games. Z Crypto. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you should do that, China. I mean, Gobby. King of Hong Kong. <laughs> Did you- <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, really, China. Make? Listen, you have to stop doing this. And we're going to talk about China Ooh. for a moment. China, they keep making counterfeit board games and shipping them over here. Oh. And you buy them on Amazon and you think this is a real copy of whatever. And you get here and it's not. Well, I bought some Legos. It's not going to be that cheap anymore. I bought some Legos. You know what I'm saying? That came from China. <laughs> and they, I'm not sure if they have led them, led them or not. 
I'm worried. <laughs> I'm very worried. Everything's made with lead. Well, I don't know. They have it. Lead paint. Lead goes. <laughs> That might be the giveaway. <laughs> That's why my kids have been acting up slow lately. They're forgetting stuff, sh- having the shakes. Oh. What's wrong? Oh no, they're playing with these. Uh, they're, sh- <laughs> they're playing with these Sun Wars Legos. Sun Wars. What's that? <laughs> oh. oh no. <laughs> okay. What? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Where were we? We were talking about the crypto. The and the crypto. crypto is the game of figuring out what people are trying to say to you or That's saying right. around you. The new code names. Okay, let me tell you about the crypto. I don't understand it. <laughs> we played this game and I have never been so irritated at you. This game is so it's, easy to understand. It's, it's, it's. Go ahead. But I wanted to make it so much more complicated. So basically what I got gathered from this game... Is that there's a team of three people on one side. There's a team. My people were like three people on our well, side. Well, plays up to eight. And Gobby's talking eight. out three loud about stuff. And I'm just listening in. Like I'm the East German government trying to spy on people. What was that yes. show? And so I'm listening in to what they're saying and trying to figure out what key words they have. And so essentially... I have three key words, and they're like dog, cat, and bird, or something. No, they're... stop. What? Stop. Stop. What game is we talking? <laughs> the crypto. Each side has this uh, board. Well, not board, but a I don't know what you call it. It's a card device, and you will put four cards in there. Thing numbered one through four. You'll see each side will clearly see their words. Ice box refrigerator and baby baby okay so that's one through four (laughs) that's one through four so you'll get a code that says all right your first word which is ice which is over the number one you need to have you need to have your team guess the order of these one two and three you need to them them to point to one which is ice then two which is box and three which is baby (laughs) ice box baby (laughs) But you can't just say the word ice. You have to have them guess. All right. Well, cold. I love vanilla ice. Box. Uh, what could you say for box? Cardboard. But at the same time, the other team's listening. Because we're listening. So they all they too can we, guess your code. We bugged you. So it's it's kind of like code names in that you're trying to like be subversive, but not to too subversive. Covert. Covert and subversive. Uh, that's another game. Subterfuge, all these things in this game. It's a party game. It plays up to eight people. It's pretty good. It's like code names. Uh, uh, I think I like code names better. I like code names better. But we played it with you and us the other day. And, and then I we was played... so frustrated. If you're on a bad team, it doesn't go well. Constipated. Huh? What? I'm glad you're like three feet away from the mic. What? Uh, but no, as a party... Just don't mouth breathe into it As again. a party game. I know how to breathe. <laughs> as, a, to breathe. as a party game, the crypto to me felt a little convoluted in its... No, it's not. In its, in its rule it's book. Fine. And it was, it was fine. It was fine. It's not fine. convoluted. Everything's convoluted. Like, Segway, convoluted mecha- mechanics and mechanism. Stop saying those words. Say them again. Mechanic, convoluted, Segway. If those were your three words in the crypto, you could just say Jerry. And Jerry, <laughs> you could have got them. You could have decrypted that. All right. Well, the devices which but propel liked, this game I liked forward. It. I liked it. It's all right. It's it's a good game. It's all right. I don't like it. it. De- if your team is lousy, it's not so good because you'll end up losing in the third round. The first round, nobody gets to guess each other's, so it's the second round, and then the third round, seems like I've lost every time. I won, didn't I? I decryptoed you. Yeah, because you chose, like, the team of the best players. No, I had... You had me, Enrique, and Bubba. I had John John, which is... He said... John was sitting... You and John. John was sitting over there doing calculus and solving the Rubik's Cube. And yes. DJ, man, DJ, I tell you what, DJ, on it. DJ is, man. John, probably the smartest guy in the room. John, John, DJ, and Jerry. That's all you need right there. 
We're John like, would be the guy back in the van on the computer. Yep. DJ would be. I don't know what DJ. He's DJ's, the guy on point. He's the guy on point. I'm not. The the, I'm like the colonel. I'm back You're here. You're like going, the I guy love that's it. other talking. I like it when a plan comes together. <laughs> Wondered what DJ's doing. It is the mouth. <laughs> That's the all mouth. you are is the mouth. Yeah. You keep acting up. How am I acting up? You're just always, you're just, you shutting down all the words I like to use. You're, <laughs> you are literally censoring me. Literally. That's another one. <laughs> all right. So I have a question. Go ahead. Segway. I played a party game made by the same ooh, people, ooh. Who, the same people who made. Do you ever do that when you're playing a party game? Say, ooh. I don't even know what that is. Hey, guys. Time for a party game. Ooh, ooh. I don't even know what that is. Raise the roof. Oh, I know that. Ooh, ooh. As I as I raise my palms yes. upward. <laughs> yes. Yes. Exactly. I know what that is. As I raise my palms. Well, I wanted the listeners to know what I was doing. Uh, that's a question. Oh. Is made by Czech Games. Oh, my. We played that. I played it at the office. And your thoughts? It's atrocious. What? It's atrocious. By Vladl Shavadl, the designer of of Code That things? was one of the stupidest games I've played lately. Ah, uh, okay. Well, here's it's not a game. No, it's not. It's, it's a it's a It's an activity. Do you know this person? Yes. It's so here's here's the thing. It was stupid. I meant to tell you that. I didn't know you played it, I but played I thought it, it was terrible. It, I found it made it me angry. I found it to be a nice icebreaker at my no, office. No. You have three cards, and each card has a various things on them, just random things. And you have this main board out there that asks three different questions, like, what could you do without A or B? Or what if you could do this, what are A or B? And you lay down those items, and well, so basically it ends this up... This is on the back of the box. Ask, hang on. And ends Which up, of these would you choose? To be able to fly A... Or B, to write the most beautiful song ever. What would you think that I would choose? That you would choose? Yeah. I don't know, because none of those apply to you. I would say B, write the most beautiful song ever. You know me so well. <laughs> me and Sarah McLaughlin <laughs> duetting. About- Julio Iglesias wrote the most beautiful song Who? ever. Who? Julio Iglesias. What do you write? To all the girls. I- no, wait. What? Hold on. That's Willie Nelson and Julio Iglesias. What? <laughs> Julio Iglesias, Julio Iglesias is a Hispanic singer. Everybody knows him. That my mo- do you know him? Do you know Julio? Oh, I know his brother Enrique Iglesias. No, that's his son. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I'm embarrassing myself yes, to the you whole are. Brazilian community. I am sorry. Now you're really getting. Why'd you say Brazilian? Because he's Brazilian. Who is? Isn't he? Julio w- or Willie? Is Willie? It says he's a Spanish singer and songwriter. He's a Spaniard. I don't know where he hails from. Spanish people have the most beautiful singing voices. They're up there with the Welsh. The Welsh? Inya? No, Welsh. Like over there in Britain. Saying. Welsh? Yeah. Oh, man. Inya? What the, is she the, saying? The, no, I don't know Inya. You don't know Inya? I know Inya, but I don't know her personally. <laughs> what are we talking about? I just have a question. I don't know. We got sidetracked. Who would you rather, who would, you, what concert would you rather go to? A Willie Nelson concert or Inya concert? Willie Nelson. Obviously. I love Inya. Back in the day. Okay. The court the love- <laughs> <laughs> I was all about Orinoco Flow and Caribbean Blue with Inya. Does Willie Nelson. Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, say it again. Orinoco Flow. <laughs> Is that a say that again? One more time. Orinoco. Orinoco. Flow. Flow. You're making that up. No. That was Inya, who was a big deal back in about. I remember Inya. 19. I remember that chilled out elevator music. Go ahead. I was all about Inya. I like was all about her albums and everything. Really? I was into her. Tell me about her. I loved Inya. But isn't she Gaelic or something? Gaelic? Is it Gaelic? It's G A E L I C. Well, then we'll go with Gaelic. I don't know. Gaelic, Gaelic, whatever. Caribbean Blue by Inya. That's what we're talking Caribbean? about. Caribbean? Caribbean. Caribbean. Look it up. I'm looking it up right now. What does this have to do with that's a question? <laughs> I don't know. We talked about the most beautiful song ever. Uh, do you know that, like in most TV series, there are filler episodes that yes. don't have to do with anything? <laughs> if you haven't tuned in yet, this is our filler episode. 
We're talking about games, but we're really not giving you anything. You just there we go. Ca- Caribbean Blue. <laughs> that I is, apologize. This is not a board game. Right. Inya. Inya. I remember Inya. I remember thinking. Stop pounding. It may reverberate into the that microphones. That Inya, beautiful voice. Yes. But unfortunately, I could not listen to her because I was afraid people would find out <laughs> and beat me up. I see how you are. Orinoco Flow. Will you quit saying that? Just quit Orinoco. Th- so this episode will be called Inya. In your face. <laughs> in your face. Uh, so speaking of games that get in your face, are one game that we... So that's a question I hate. I thought it was a nice icebreaker. I would not buy it. No. It was given to me for free. Was that a freebie? Yeah. At BGG Spring? Yeah, yeah BGG Spring. Okay. I was hoping you didn't buy that. No, I didn't buy that. Uh, Imperial 2030. Okay, so this is our main game. Our main topic of conversation besides Inya. Imperial 2030 is one of those games that I wish... It's made by Matt Gertz. The Matt Gertz, the gentleman who made... Uh, did he do Concordia? Yes. Yes. And Navigator, and he... Transatlantic, I believe. Uh... Imperial 2030 is one of the most brilliant designs of a board game I have seen in a long time. We've had it for a while. We've played it several times. He also did NTK. The only thing about Imperial 2030 that I do not like, and I'll get this out of the way, it's too long. It I, is long. I wish they would do a second edition of it. I wish they would. That f- is it. I wish they <laughs> the would. The first one was Imperial. I wish they'd do a fourth edition. Imperial to skip, 30 to, 10. To skip the third edition, go to the fourth edition, and just streamline it and make it a solid two hour long game. If you're unfamiliar with Imperial 2030. Wait, 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 wait. The game. You t- said a solid two hour. That's what you want is a two hour long game? The game's three hours. Every time we play, it's been three hours. I like about an hour to hour and a half. Well, then it looks like we know who likes long games here. Yeah. Mr. Inya. I'm the Z Garcia of board game snobs. And I am the not anybody else in relationship to the Dice Tower. Oh. Who? Who what? You know, there was one episode you were like saying, Dice Tower, what's that? Who, Who? what? And huh? then you immediately referenced them in your next statement. <laughs> Oh, that Jerry. <laughs> what a cad. Uh, it's just that one time I offended that one. <laughs> that one time I offended Tom Vassell. I offended Tom Vassell one time, and it's been the bane of my existence. That's why I have a small, uh, unrecognizable podcast about board games to this day. You're not in the you're not in the uh, boys club. I'm not. I'll never will be, and I don't care to be because you know we why. Don't care. We're, we're on, not reviewers. We're, we're not revi- we're not reviewers. No, we're just personalities. We're entertainers. We're something that the dice tower will never have, <laughs> and oh, they'll have things snap. that we'll never have, such as like a Kickstarter money. and money <laughs> and, a, and a job, money and respect, sponsors <laughs> and an audience. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> darn you, Tom Vassell. Oh, uh, what a nice guy, though. He I did is. meet Tom one time. He's he was as nice so as you can be. I know. And I met. Uh, I love Tom. I, it's fun fact. If you want to Let's see, make this the Dice Tower episode. If you want to see me. In your slash Dice if Tower. If you want episode. to see me, I was on the Dice Tower one time. I was literally on their YouTube channel. Yes. It was BGG. 2015? 2000, what is today? 18? 16? 17? 16? 16. 2016. Yeah. Uh, where Z, uh, not Z, uh, Sam is filming with his camcorder, just walking around the uh, Expo Center, and I'm talking to uh, Mr. Levine in the background. And I was just told, I told him that I loved the, his opinion on games. Yeah. And that out of everybody in the Dice Tower, you preferred him. I preferred his opinion. Like if he said buy a game, out of all the other three main guys, I listened to him for my economic games. Like I didn't do railroad games. Another he's railroad hardcore, game, but he's hardcore, and I was hardcore, and I just I expressed that to him. You made a Tom and Jerry joke, and I made a Tom and Jerry joke, and he come up to me, and he made me get on camera with <laughs> Sam, That's right. and I made a very stupid Tom and Jerry joke. Said, "Hey, have, I got this idea. Why don't me and Tom do a joke, do a seg- segment where Tom loves a game and I hate it because Tom likes every game I hate, or something of that nature." Yeah. Anyways, uh, 
And then later we met Tom, and Tom is like the nicest person He's ever. The nicest guy ever. And Z is probably nicer. Z, Sam was. Uh, I love them all. I know they're nice people, <laughs> and, it's, 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 and, and as much as we rag on them, they're actually nice people. They are. Tom got me into board gaming. Hey, I'll, I, I played, must say, I, I played listen. Settlers. I started looking at YouTube stuff. I started listening to podcasts. I started it all. Respect. But one day, as I pat my chest and throw a peace sign. Yeah, well, one day Tom did something that I could never forgive him for. Which one? Basically, he ended up recommending games that deep down, I just couldn't understand why he'd recommend them. And then there were like other what? games. Just, just, just. Do I need to recall Splendor Century Spice or Century Splendor. Spice Road or El Grande? Let me go down well, the list. That's why we're the board game. And not. so I slowly realized, and it's not Tom's fault, I just realized that our tastes were so different. Yes. That as much as I liked listening to his stuff, his reviews, I just realized that our opinions were different. Well, like we would listen and say, he would say, this is approved, this is approved, this is last time approved, this is approved. And we're like, I mean, yeah, those are fine games, but we want, we like games, we like games that blow us away. I don't want to settle for fine. Century Spice Road, sure. Right. If you want to kill time, you can play Century Spice I'm Road. I'm not here to kill time. Do you want to have fun? I'm here to have fun. And be blown away? Blow me away in you. Well, then play Sentient. <sighs> I like Sentient. No, no. We are in copyright infringement. We have 30 seconds. No, we don't. We do not. Inya is mad at you Inya. right now. I love you, Inya. No, turn that off. Our fans are not Inya fans. I guarantee you, you the demographic that we have. I no, guarantee they all know who Inya is. The eight, and I, they love her. Of the eight people that listen to our podcast, <laughs> Eric, not a one of Frankie. them listen to Inya. Giuseppe. None of them. And. Who else? Who else? Is <laughs> I don't know who else. What are the other eight? Oh, uh, Imperial Twenty Thirty. Let me get back to this because I I I truly love Imperial Twenty Thirty. <clears throat> I love it too. It's it's too long, like you said. Okay, but it is as Gobby would say. Oh, it's rich. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you do so much neck gesticulating? <laughs> gesticulating. <laughs> Yeah, that's what you do. You do. No. You just, just, you no. gesticulate like no, no other. No, wow, Everybody wow. always says, "Oh, it's <laughs> because oh, you no. gesticulate." I <laughs> like risk. Okay, <laughs> but if go. I want to go into board games, I don't want to see a higher end risk. I have risk legacy in your closet. I know, and we're never going to play it. You, we're going to play it. We're going to like it. <laughs> no. Yes, in Imperial Twenty Thirty. It is a simple combat mechanic. It's one for one. You move one little army into another area. They take If I have three, you have two. That's it. I'll have one left. And that's it. That What's interesting about the game is it has a rondelle. Is that what that's called? Yes, a rondelle. Where you select... Ron who? <laughs> rondelle. Oh. You know, the owner and proprietor of Dale Computers. <laughs> Look looked that up. That would be really weird. Oh, uh, that when you select an action... You go three spaces for free around this little circle. Every other space past that costs you some money. So you get to do things like move armies or produce and so forth. But the whole thing about the game is that there are like five or six other... There are like five or six armies on the board, and you might not control any. You are investing in each army. Each and every one of them. You're investing in one of them. And as you invest in them, as you invest in them... If you have them controlling shares, you then get to move that army around. And so the game has this weird mechanic where... Mechanic. You, I didn't say mechanism. That that you may not control an army. You mm. might not get a turn. You might just sit there and watch other people control the armies while you invest in them. And at the end of the game, when you add up the shares that you have in each army... You might have the most. Gobby wins in this game. Um, quite, I was going to quite I, frequently. I was going to step in earlier. What my strategy last game was actually to lose all of my shares, to not have any control, because then you get to invest mm -hmm. more often. 
And so, like, it, it now I didn't, I, this was probably the, well, I don't know how many rounds in, <clears throat> but I let my share, like, I let my control of a country go. So I had no country. I was a man without a country. You're a Ronin. But then every time somebody else got to invest, I invested. And I won on those investments. Because I had armies. Played brilliantly. I had, uh, yes. By myself. I, I had armies that I controlled, and I controlled most armies. And I was winning. You literally, you were the UN. I was, I was, I was, I was wiping out everybody else. And at the end of the game, because I drove up the values of those armies and those countries, that when it came time to add up the value of their shares, Gobby was diversified enough that he won. Barely, but he won. And that's what makes the game so interesting. It's a area control sort of combat game but at the same time it's very odd that where you might control america and be fighting against china and then the very next round you might own china and america yeah. and now you're like trying to back each other out of it it's like you've you've taken over it is one of the most fascinating games i have ever played and it is, it used to be in my top 10 because it's like area control and there's in, combat and investing there's investing there's that the multipliers mm-hmm. it, it's 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 an interesting game it's a very interesting game and we were playing it we hadn't we played it once probably two years ago i think it was the last time we played it yeah and so we're like okay we haven't played this forever jerry's won't play it again we played it maybe oh, a month or two ago i don't forget and we're like oh we forgot and it was super simple to remember. Picked it up. Pick back up. It's one of those very irritating. It's it. The only thing that's difficult to learn about it is that it's so different. Yeah. The thought of like when we were doubling out the pieces, the, uh, Rike was like, "So are you going to be purple or are you going to be blue?" I was like, "No, you're not. You'll start in control of anything." Yeah. I'm not in control of anything. It's kind of like American Airlines. Not American Airlines. <laughs> Airlines Europe. American Airlines. <laughs> Airlines Europe. Oh, yeah. You oh, don't man. control a color. You're investing in all of them. U.S. Airways is my favorite airways. Continue. Have you? Why? Because I flew overseas twice and uh, intercontinental with them. Does U.S. Airways exist still? I don't know, but they were my favorite. I don't know. I don't like to fly. Flying equals I would rather make the things. most... Best song ever. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Callback. Nice. I forgot. Forgot. I have a short term memory. So Imperial twenty thirty. Me and Jerry approve. Boom. It's a excellent game. Goes to dynamite. It's a tad long. Tad. Much like photosynthesis. We both like photosynthesis. But it just goes on a little too it's long. It's literally like watching trees grow. <laughs> oh, we got a comment on our Board Game Stobs website. What? What'd they say? I think we just reaffirmed their like of uh, photosynthesis. Because hmm. she was like, thank you for this post. I like photosynthesis. Which I always find unusual. Because it's like, if you like a game, if you're already playing a game... Why go and look? Why do you look for a review of that game? That's interesting to me. Here's why: because everybody wants to be reaffirmed in their love of something. I guess so. It's kind of like the people who wear those corduroy jackets. Oh, sweet! They look. I know. I I have a corduroy jacket, and when I see somebody else that has, you look amazing in it. And I go, aha! And it's like, so you like corduroy? Yeah, it's so warm in the winter. And if a dog tries to bite you. (laughs) <laughs> like it's like it's like one of those suits where the dog can't bite through. Corduroy is amazing. I can hear you coming up my zip 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 zip. zip, zip, zip. And so people are like why here. why why would you not wear corduroy? And so you share that love of it. I get on a corduroy website. Yeah, get in a forum about corduroy. Yes, and I'm like oh yeah, we all love it. It's like people who love side. They demanded that a certain shut up and sit down do a review of it. Yeah. After that, everybody had bought it. It's like one of the most successful Kickstarters ever. People like to be reassured that what they like is good. I know, but that's I like that's interesting. I mean, I appreciate that, but like I prefer a game that like I don't know nothing about. For instance, I was looking at cool stuff. I'm mm-hmm. always looking at cool stuff for things to buy. Yeah, there's a game called World War One Deluxe. So it's like regular World War One, but deluxe. Under its description, there is nothing. So apparently, it's an old game. It's just there. I looked at Miniature Market. They had 
a description of World War One Deluxe. So I'm like, what is this game? And I'm thinking it's probably a uh, like a war game of some type. Oh, good. Yeah. But it says it's two to four. It's by Decision Games. It says World War One Deluxe Edition is an updated of. No, this is not good English on their part. They missed an editor somehow. Because it says World War One Deluxe Edition is an updated of the Joseph Miranda game published in Strategy and Tactics number 294. Wow. You ever heard of that? Strategy and Tactics 294? Yeah. yeah. Have it's, you really? It's just like Strategy and Tactics 293. <laughs> I mean, is that a magazine? What is uh, that? Yeah, it's like it's a magazine. It includes updated graphics with a mounted game board, included are the optional rules and setup maps not published in the original magazine version. Yeah, I don't do the magazines. I just I filled and stream. And I don't fish. I just like looking at fish. So apparently it's a war game. But I went online, looked at YouTube. There's nothing on this game. Nothing. If you know about it, let me know. Another one. Medieval. Mm. It's on Cool Stuff. This is why I love you. I have not told you. But I emailed the designer of Medieval. Did you really? Requesting a review copy. They will not send us a review copy. (laughs) Because they probably don't know who we are. Of course they do. But I saw that, and I was very interested in it. Medieval. Yes. One to six, so it has a solo Uh, option. Interest peaked. It's a strategy game. Medieval. Negotiation. Oh, I'm foaming. Political. I'm foaming. It says solitaire. I'm all about it. And territory building. Area control, dice rolling, and hand management. (sighs) I'm all about this. It sounds right up our alley. This is my alley. I own this alley. I looked at it on YouTube. Nothing. Nothing. Published by HGN Games? Yes, I sent them a very exquisite email (laughs) requesting a review. My name is Inigo Montoya. (laughs) You have my review copy. (laughs) Prepare to die. Uh, Send it or die. They uh, they're not going to send us one. No, but either still, I may have. Well, because if they look at our website, they might see a review from. Two years ago, because you don't review games no more. I'm not a reviewer. I realize that my lot in life is to be a mediocre podcaster. <laughs> Where we just talk about random because things. Because I don't care to... Oh, speaking of random things. Oh. Uh, at BGG Segway. Segway. No, this is a poor Segway. Oh. I don't even call it a Segway. That's a tricycle. London. A poor Segway is a tricycle. second edition of London. Right here. Oh, that's what we should have talked about. Oh. We'll do that on our next game. So I have been playing this game, and I finally mm. bought it. It's by Osprey Games. I love you, Osprey Games. They're also the people who made... Uh, amazing. Um, King is Dead. King is Dead. They uh, also made... Aliens in Outer Space. The aliens in Outer Space. They also made... Um, London by Martin Wallace. High uh, Society. Oh, really? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. It's a smaller box. Uh, anyways... It? Is it the same size box? No. Okay. Uh, London, I have enjoyed it, and I had a complaint about it. I had a complaint that it's too long. And you know Osprey what? Games, OG. OG. You know what I found out? You were playing it wrong. Playing it wrong. You I've been playing it wrong, me. and it shortens the game considerably. And so I now have no complaints about London. I'm Martin Wallace, I love you. I love you, Osprey Games. When we played it at the last BGG, I mean, you went to it together. I love I you enjoyed all. it. I thought it was, I was like, I mean, it's a Euro. It's a card game. It's kind of dry. I don't know that I'd go out and buy it. But I enjoyed it tremendously. I'm glad you bought it. Jerry's chewing on ice. Mm. Always good for a podcast when you chew on ice. Well, Jurassic World, I went and saw that this weekend. The other weekend? I mean, the other week. A weekend. I don't know when this is going to come out. Yeah. This may we may sock well, this ask, away. Let me ask you right now, Chris Pratt. Is he as handsome in the trailers as he is in the movies? He's gorgeous. I love him. In the movie, he'll always be. It handy. looks like he's very tan. Of course, he's supposed to be rugged. That's put me off. I t- I said to the girls I was with the women. Sorry, my wife and uh, my adoptive daughter Charday from Disagreeable Nerd. Listen to us at disagreeablenerd.com. You don't have a disagreeablenerd.com. Oh, that's right. I know. <laughs> you don't. You don't have a website. We have an Instagram. Yes. And a Twitter. IG. But uh, I said, he looks like he has on, you can tell he has on makeup yeah. the whole movie. Mm-hmm. And it's like orangish looking. It doesn't look he's normal. spray tanned? Uh, it looks like it. But he's a good looking guy. Now, this is something else. I've been powering through. I've been 
just going through Parks and Rec like nobody's business. Oh, I love that show. And Andy Dwyer, from like season six to season seven, I think that's when he went to make Guardians. Yes. And lost like 50 pounds. Yes, and got buff. Yeah. Steroids. And he comes back and he's still got the little beard. But then he's like, yeah, I stopped drinking beer in the show. and lost 50 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly. <laughs> I, I love I love Chris Pratt. He's a good guy. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom is a entertaining movie. It's a good if you like Jurassic World Park, Jurassic World, you like dinosaurs, you like people running from dinosaurs, you're gonna like it. And guess what? Things don't go like they think they're going to. I have an idea for a Jurassic Park movie. That they have a park and people go to said park to see the dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. And they put the little quarter in the little machine and turn it and they get feed and they feed the little small dinosaurs uh-huh. and then they drive around and they buy a t-shirt okay. and little stuffed animals and nothing happens. No. Just spend two hours. Where nothing goes awry. Nothing goes awry. And it's all of a sudden like the family's just leaving. Like the whole time, it's like an M. Night Shyamalan dress apart. <laughs> like you're thinking something's going to happen. And for two hours, you're like, oh, the dinosaur's about to get out. The twist <laughs> is. The dinosaur's about to get out. And also the family just goes home and be like, well, back to work, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I got to go to Costco when we get home. And then that's that's what happens. And the twist is, there is no twist. There is no twist. The nothing dinosaurs happens. never get out. The park is well managed and run. <laughs> Nobody that is original. Nobody's doing any weird genetic anything, <laughs> and it's just this is what there's it is. There's no black market. There's no black market, and there's no Dennis Nedry. Oh, and that's it. And is when, that Newman? Yeah, Newman. <laughs> and when the Newman. credits roll, it's just like, what was that? Oh. It's like you watched. We you watched a visit to Disneyland. After, after the credits roll, you realize you watched a two hour of home movie, <laughs> family movie of this their trip to some dinosaur land. <laughs> that would be uh, that would be a twist. Uh, M. Because Not we've had directed three, by M. Not Shyamalan. <laughs> there's been five movies in which their plans don't go according to their <laughs> My plan. My favorite one was the second one where they're like, you know what we should do? We should load this T Rex up and bring him to San Diego. So they bring the dinosaur to San Diego and he gets out and everyone's like, oh, bad idea. Why did this happen? <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. They should have coordinated Lost World. Well, they bring the uh, dinosaur to Los Angeles. Is it San Diego or Los Angeles? It's San Diego. They should have merged that with Volcano starring Tommy Lee Jones. What? And the dinosaur like is on there at the same time the volcano is erupting. Tommy Lee Jones would just look and at And Tommy the- Lee Jones is like running from the volcano and runs into the T-Rex. No. And he's like, I don't care. <laughs> That would have been awesome. That's the best. That's first off. That's wrong movie. That's has one arm. That's fugitive. (laughs) (laughs) That's wrong. It was the one armed man. Oh. Oh, that's good. We're giving away our age. You know what I like about um you know what I like about Tommy Lee Jones? What's that? Is that he's not making movies anymore. Because he, he, made, uh, he made so many good ones. He made What's the one that won the Academy Award with the weirdo guy? Uh, no Country for Old no Men. No Country for Old like, Men. What I like about Tom Lee Jones is that he's he made so many classic movies, just like my man Kevin Costner. Oh, and yeah. That, now, and Kevin Costner's on TV now. He's coming back. Yes, that's, a good, back. that's supposed to be a good show. And so it's like, I don't want to keep them seeing doing oh, the money grab. Oh, okay. I got, I got something else, too. Go Completely ahead. unbordered game related, but go ahead, Tommy go, Lee Jones. Well, I just love Tommy Lee Jones, and I'm glad that he's not making that many movies. What were we talking about? I don't recall. Oh, my goodness. All I know is, is that in terms of board games, with London, we talked about London to crypto, that's a question, and Imperial 2030. Oh, my goodness. I really forgot. I think... And I'm I'm going out on a limb here. You ready for this? Okay, go ahead. We've often talked about that we're in the golden age of board gaming, and I think we're on the way down. I have you not, think the it's the bubble has burst? The bubble already? has burst. I don't think I've seen anything interesting. I'm holding my breath for the later in this. What year. was the last game that you're like? This has blown my mind, and it's brand new to me. Blown my mind, brand new, new game that has come out. Um, Lorenzo? Last year, Lorenzo and Godfather were both very good. Uh, Azul is very good. I think it will obviously win the the Spear de Zares. (laughs) Yes, that's it. That's it. The Spear de Zares. (laughs) 
the spill dissolve has? The spear of the czars. Yes, it will win that. Is that Prussian? Yes. <laughs> Prussian without the P. It's Russian. Uh, it will win because it's good. Uh, but it's not an amazing game. It's just it was enjoyable. It does what it does. It does what it does. It is what it is. And it is what it is. Much like myself, I think that we are slowly getting to where we're getting into the what I like to call what happened to the movies. We're getting into the remakes. Yeah, we're getting into the same old thing over and over and over. And it's up to you, dear listeners, to come up with the next great thing that's a mechanism. Like, for instance, out of all the games that we love that we have here in our possession, the games that we like are from two years ago. Uh, Viticulture, Scythe, Royals. Barony's Barony, Barony, Gold West. There, there, there's a lot of older games there's that we like. There's just nothing that... Imperial 2030 is an old oh, game. Man. Yes, Shogun's an old I game. I say old. I, and I like Shogun. Shogun, yeah, but that's an older I, game. I love Shogun. There's been nothing this year to blow our minds. Nothing this year has blown my mind, but this is July. Yeah, July, it is. July. And so I'm waiting. I'm That's true, test, Jerry. T- it's just Actually, this is not... Oh, I don't know when this is going to come out. It might come out. Don't date stuff. See, you shouldn't say that. I'll but date whatever I'll edit I that out, to. And I'm not going to edit that it's out. It's July. 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 And uh, I'm just interested in seeing where the, the uh, industry goes. I like goes. Bunny Kingdom. I'd say of anything here recently, Bunny Kingdom. But I haven't played the Reiner Canizia game yet. And you're about to. And we need to get off here so we can play. My name's Jerry, and I'm gone. Contact us, boardgamesnobs at gmail.com. Boardgamesnobs at Instagram, Twitter. Leave us a review, please, either on Podbean or iTunes. Have a good day.